welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and on this edition, we'll be looking back at the mauling up at Molyneux. Another disappointing result for Unai Emery's side on the road. We'll be talking about that game and looking at where it leaves us in our bid to finish in the top four. My guest this evening is football reporter Chris Davison. Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, Chris Davison. How you doing, mate? I'm good, thanks, Harry. Yeah, not too bad. Obviously disappointed with the result last night. Um, uh, so, yeah, as well as we can be, I suppose. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I can tell you it was an absolute shit show. Uh, made the trip up to Molyneux with a couple of friends yesterday and we were bitterly disappointed coming back. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not, I, I don't go to as many away games as I used to or as I should. Uh, so I'm not going to sit here and make out that I'm outraged that I travelled all that way and I gave up all that time to go there and, and see that performance because, of course, there are people that have it worse than me. There's no doubt about that. Um, so that's the first thing I'll say. But I, I can't even begin to explain my disappointment uh, following on from that performance. I mean, let's start with Unai Emery's initial team selection. And we've been tinkering, haven't we, between a back three, a back four, uh, in recent months, um, it seemed as though we'd kind of settled on the back three and then lo and behold, we're playing back fours again. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on this whole system thing? In your opinion, are we stronger with a back four? Are we stronger with a back three? Or does it depend on our opponent? Uh, that's a tough one. Because you know, you know, we've been disappointing uh, at the back um, for a while now. Um I think with the start with the team selection last night, I think it was a strong team. Um, I think most fans were actually happy Mustafi had been dropped um, for, for obvious reasons. Um, you know, and I, I think Koscielny, Sokletis are actually a, a solid pairing at the back. They're probably our best uh, couple of defenders we have at the club, um, fit, fit and ready to play at the moment. Um, Mainzy, Ainsley Maitland-Niles is in good form for us, doing really well at the, the right wing back role. Um, so, you know, at the back, I think it was good. Torreira, I think it was Torreira and, and, um, and Jacques in, in the middle. Um, again, probably, yeah, um, you know, two of our best best midfielders at the club at the moment been not OK for us this season. Um, and then obviously, I think Aubameyang w w was out because um, he'd been ill recently. So it was, it was Lacquer up front. Um, so, you know, it was it was a strong team, in my opinion. You know, obviously, Ramsey's injured at the moment as well, so we can, couldn't include him. It was our, it was probably our strongest team that we, we have available at the moment. Um, so, for me, the, the lineup was a little bit promising and uh, was, was what I personally wanted to see. Um, and then, yeah, I guess maybe it, it just depends on the opponent, maybe, that we're facing uh, when I'm choosing the formation and the back five, the back four, etc., um, so yeah, that's what I'd probably put it down to. I think Wolves line up um, similar to that anyway, don't I? I think they have sort of three centre backs and then the two wing backs as well. Um, so maybe Emery did want to match that uh, yesterday, um, but uh, unfortunately, it didn't really work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, I think you know, and I've been quite vocal in the last few months about the fact that I've I've struggled to see Unai Emery's vision. I've struggled with what the system is, what it should be, what we're best at. And, and, you know, it felt as though we'd kind of gone down that route of, right, we're going to stick with a back three now. We had some impressive results. We went on a great run of form. And then he started chopping and changing it again. And I get it. You know, there are injuries. There are players not fully fit. There's rotation needs to be taken into account. I get all that. For me, though, I would have probably done it the other way around. I would have probably played the back four against Crystal Palace and the back three against Wolves. And, and whenever I talk about us changing system too much the first thing people normally say to me is well we finally got a manager who's adaptable to our opponent well for me the way Wolves play everybody knows it everybody knows that they play with a back three two very very dangerous wing backs getting up and down they've got great width in their team they've got a solid yep. core they're a very good side the likes of Moutinho Neves in the middle keep the ball very very well so for me, if there was a game to go back to the back three, it was yesterday. And for some reason, Unai Emery felt that it would be better to go with the back four. And for me, it made absolutely no sense. Koscielny and Socrates were being pulled out of position uh, in order to get out and support Ainsley Maitland-Niles and Nacho Monreal. Meanwhile, Sea Kolasinac, who's been 
really impressive this season, it has to be said, probably one of our biggest threats as well, was left on the bench. And you just think to yourself, why have you chosen, uh, you know, to go to the back four for this particular game? And, I, you know, I found that frustrating. I, I know that you, you said the team was strong when you initially saw it. And yes, in terms of personnel, it wasn't a bad side. But for me, it made sense to go with the back three yesterday. And I know hindsight is a wonderful thing, but... You know, that's my feeling on that. We're always being told, aren't we, though, about how good Unai Emery's preparation is for games and how he analyses the opponent down to a T, and that's something that Arsene Wenger never used to do, etc., etc. But he's, we've seen in the last few weeks that, or in the last two games in particular, that maybe he's missed the trick with some of these teams. Could it be a bit of arrogance? Could it be that Unai Emery doesn't feel that the likes of Crystal Palace or Wolves deserve the same analysis that he would put into a game against Spurs or Manchester United? Well, you know, yeah, it's a difficult one. I think every every game is crucial, you know, and it should always be looked at the same way. Um, even a home game against Crystal Palace, for example, we shouldn't overlook Crystal Palace. They're a decent team um, and uh, they're a strong team. And um, it looks like we under underestimated them a little bit um, the other day. Uh, and again, I think obviously we should pr be prepared for a tough away game at Wolves, which which it was last night. Um, but it, we, I've heard a lot of people saying um, that the, the team just weren't up for it and just didn't show much fight, much motivation. Um, so it's you know it's a little bit concerning to hear people take that away from the game because. We never, ever want to hear that. Um, there's obviously a, apparently a similar situation going on at Man United at the moment. You know, we want every single uh, player wearing, wearing the Arsenal shirt to put in 100% and want to win every game. Um, so, you know, it, like I said, it's concerning to hear that. Emery should be preparing um, each and every game uh, uh to as best as possible for himself and for the team. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, he, he is doing that, but obviously it's just not clicking with, with whatever he's doing at the moment. And um, I think there's a lot more to it than the manager. I think the player's mentality uh, away from home, um, especially, but obviously just in general, because obviously the, the result against Palace the last week, um, I just think we're not strong enough men mentally wise. I think um, the players take some of the players take it for granted um, and uh, don't wear their heart on the sleeve sometimes. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's not good at all. Um, something has got to change very quickly, it, whether it be before the end. Well, I mean, obviously it can't really be before the end of the season. We've got a long left, but obviously there's two big away games coming up in terms of making a statement away from home and also making a statement in the top four uh, race, Harry, because obviously we're facing Leicester away, Burnley away as well two tough places to go. We've got to make a statement now and say, look, we can win, we will win, and we'll get a result for the fans, um, and we'll do everything we can to, to push for the top four. And then hopefully, in the summer, some more work will be done with transfers and some more work will be done on the training pitch as well, because we can't afford to be like this away from home next season. Absolutely, absolutely. And for me, you know, like you said, we I thought that when we went to Watford and we got that victory and, you know, we didn't play very well at Watford. I don't think that's, that's any secret. Yeah. I think everybody accepts that we probably scraped through that game, probably got more out of it than we actually deserved. But at the end of the day, we came away with the three points. And from then on, you're thinking, right, Crystal Palace, home banker. And it was such a disappointing result. And I know we spoke about that on, on the previous podcast. So I don't want to go back on that too much. But this was pretty much more of the same, wasn't it? It was lacklustre. It was poor. It was yeah. as though we were ill-prepared for the fixture. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned already, I was at Molyneux last night. I thought the atmosphere was fantastic um, from a Wolves perspective. Anyway, I thought that what I was watching was a team that knew exactly what they were doing and when they were supposed to be doing it. A team who are fully bought into their coaches ways and, and you know, and they've seen a, a, some fantastic results off the back of it. Their record against the top six is brilliant. So to lose at Wolves is not a huge surprise to me. And if I'm honest, I'm not so disappointed that we got beat it's the manner of the defeat that really hurt me if I'm being honest and the fact that those yeah. players were strolling around that pitch as if they didn't give a shit to be honest um, yeah. I, I feel 
I don't want to totally sit here and blame the manager because, you know, the, the reality is that a lot of those players were here before he came. We've seen that the club, you know, they've backed him a little bit, but they haven't backed him anywhere near enough and they haven't put the level of investment in that's required. But for me, you know, it seems as though we've got players out there that, that are the opposite to what that Wolves squad are. And, and when I say that, I mean, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what the system's supposed to be. It's different every week. Um, the personnel is different every week. And I think it's a, that's a real problem. I think you need continuity at this level and you need players to understand exactly what they're being asked. And at the moment, that's just not happening. Now, I've touched on transfers there a little bit. You mentioned as well that we need to do some business in the summer. There have been lots and lots of reports surfacing again this week that Arsenal will have a very limited transfer budget in the summer. And I know that we don't know that for sure. I know it's only speculation at this point. But what's your take on that whole situation? Because for me, it's not unbelievable that this board and this club are going to turn around to Unai and say, look, mate, you're limited again this summer. This is what you've got to work with. And, and the fear is that it won't be enough. Yeah, well, like you said, I mean, it is just speculation at the moment. Um, and, you know, like you said as well, um, with this Arsenal board, um, you're never surprised at what they can turn around and say to our manager about funds, etc., especially with Karanke there still. Um, but from my point of view, um, it's nothing more than speculation. Um, obviously, spoken to an Arsenal representative um, uh, not so long ago, a few months ago now, when he said that they never... Um, pass on any information about their fans to anyone outside the club. It's just all pure speculation, and for me, that that is you know believable, and I, I do see how it is. Um, if there's journalists out there that have um, uh, reliable information from someone within the club that that is the case, that will have low fans, then fair enough, fair dues. Um, I guess we'll see we'll see uh, what happens in the summer in that respect, but. You know, if for me, uh, Harry, it's it's key that Emery is back this summer because, like you said, he's he's been backed a little bit, he's been supported a little bit with the funds and with bringing a few players in when he first joined in the summer. But we've got to carry on that now. I think we've brought in a, a top-class goalkeeper, which we needed. Yep, Bern Leno done a fantastic job. Socrates has been a real leader at the back for us this season. So I think we need to add to that as well. We need another top-class centre-back. To, to partner up with Socrates, Torreira, young, upcoming, real gem of a find that we, we that we got in the summer. He's been fantastic for us. Obviously, he had a, um, a few a suspension and a few injury problems there here and now. So, I think uh, a few weeks ago he wasn't featuring as much as, as he would have liked. But he's back now, um, and hopefully he'll, he'll get back into decent form soon because um, he's, he's going to be a really important player for us. He's the sort of player we've been screaming out for for a long time in that central midfield defensive position now. Anyway. Um, We've got to find a Ramsey replacement, which, you know, isn't going to be easy, but you'd like to think. And it seems to have been the case with obviously a lot of reports going around in the media that Arsenal have been looking at several names already. Um, so we should be hopefully in a, a good position for that. Um, and there's obviously been talks of another winger coming in as well. So, you know, it's every transfer window and, and during every season, um, players... Um, uh, get linked with with football clubs all year round, you know, and, and you know that's always it has been the case for Arsenal that will go for him, go for him, and whatnot. But you know, hopefully that does become a reality in the summer because it's clear that we we've got an imbalanced squad. I've sent, said that all along. You know, Emery's working with a very imbalanced squad um, that lacks depth and quality in certain areas. So it's it's got to be improved. Um, we want to bring in players that are, are proud and will put everything on the line for, for playing for Arsenal Football Club. Um, but we just, we're just we lacking a little bit of, of quality as well, like I mentioned. And if we've got to improve our away form, especially, um, and, and you know uh, get into the top four with a bit more ease, if you like, and compete against these top teams, um, playing Champions League football, then we've got to we've, we've got to build keep building this squad. We've got to we've got to add more quality and, and, and more experience and an extra depth because if not, we're just going to keep struggling. So in that respect, Harry, with the transfer window coming up for the summer, we've you know I really really hope Brunei's backed um, a lot more because look I'm. Um, I'm 100, 110% Unai Emery in, you know, I'm, I'm not turned on him at the moment and I doubt I will because he's a top quality manager. Like I said, he's he got a really hard job on his hands working with this squad. 
and you know I, th I think you know he's got to be back like we said so I think it's still you know obviously anyone can have their opinion on a manager that's fair enough everyone everyone has their own opinions and that's that's absolutely fine think what you like about Unai but I think if we want to really judge him properly then we've got to see what how you know what's business we do do in the summer uh, and then and then judge him next season Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I'm not for a minute suggesting that he should be sacked or anything like that. But for no, me, no, no. there are some fundamental flaws in some of the work that he's done this season. And what I and I know I say this pretty much on every show now, but what I struggle with is the same people that were standing on the terraces last season calling for Arsene Wenger's head have now all of a sudden decided that they, they can't criticise Zuna, that he's immune to any sort of criticism. And that drives me absolutely yeah. mad. I mean, we spoke about the, the signings that have already come in. Bern Leno was one that you mentioned. And Bern Leno was at fault for at least two of the three goals that we conceded last night. There is an argument yeah. from some people that he was poorly positioned for the opener as well, the free kick. But, you know, I think the general consensus is that that was a good free kick. And let's look at the other two goals. So... You know, what I don't get is why so many people are, are reluctant to say that Bern Leno cost us a couple of goals yesterday. Whereas had that been certain players, had that been a Shkodran Mustafi, for example, a Granit Xhaka, that's all we would have been hearing about today. You know, there's been criticism flying yeah. around today for Mesut Ozil again. And for me, you know, Mesut Ozil got himself on the ball quite a bit in the first half. Had to pick up some really obscure positions out on the left, on the right-hand side just to get on the ball because Wolves had done such a good job on him. But every time he received it, he had three or four men around him, no one to to, to pick out. Lacazette was completely, uh, you know, swallowed up by Wolves' centre-halves. And for me, you know, that was a, a problem with the team selection again. And I know Aubameyang was out, but you need to find a way of, uh, of tweaking your team, tweaking your system to give Alexander Lacazette the support that he requires. Now, you know, lots has been made this season about our away form. And, you know, whilst it's slightly better than last season, it's still nowhere near good enough. It's still not up to Arsenal standards. But my question to you, Chris, is, you know, we, we keep talking about this hangover from Arsene Wenger. At what point will Unai Emery have to start taking responsibility for these poor performances on the road? Well, it's, it's, the thing is, I think Unai will know that he's he's... Part, partly to blame for our away form. He, look, he's, he's our he's our manager and he's a he's our head coach. He he will be playing a part in, in in it to a certain extent, and it's 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 obviously the players as well that are playing these games. You know, so both both have got both have got to take the blame, Harry. You know, and I think Unai will be disappointed in himself that he hasn't been able to to get these results away from home after you know do, doing hard work with the players on the training field. Um, and it, he will be, feel slightly guilty about that. Um, but for me, you know, obviously as well, the players have got to take blame and they've got to um, pull the finger out the backsides pretty quickly um, or during in the summer, pre-season, what, whenever now, because obviously we know that the season is quickly coming to a close, um, that they've, they've got to improve. And I think when we talk about Unai Emery's decisions, um, this season, and and for me, I know, I know, I, know I said it to you on a, on a, uh, the podcast a few weeks ago, Harry, that some of his qu uh, decisions have been questionable about uh, lineups, etc. Um, but I think you know it's his first season in charge, and he's probably trying to find the best start in eleven. Um, still, you know, he's trying to find the the best players but to is, include. Is that in the all squad. right, Chris? Is is that acceptable that we're you know, three games from the end of the season and he still doesn't know what his best lineup is. And I accept it's... that, you know, you're going to get to a point where, you know, if he had a system and he said, you know, this is the way I want to play. These are the players I need for it. I haven't got these players and I'm currently missing a left back, a right back, for example, and a winger. Yeah. Then you'd say fair enough. But we are 35 games into the Premier League season. That's not to mention, you know, all the Europa League games and cup ties we played as well. And Unai Emery for me, still doesn't know what his best team is. And I can't accept that a manager at this level who works with those players day in, day out can still be in that position this far down the line. Yeah, I, I totally get what you mean, Harry. And, you know, it's it's not ideal. It isn't, it isn't. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be the case. I totally agree with that. He should know 
I think pretty much he overall he know he knows which players are, are best. I, I th- um, so yeah, um, you know, there's certain things missing that he's he's probably not got yet and understood yet, Harry. Um, you know, like we mentioned a minute ago about the the change of formation here and there and. You know, it's. I think we we talked about it after the Watford game. Actually, it's not ideal um, switching formations all the time and picking other players. You know, one one uh, one week is Monreal the back, and then it's Mustafi, and then etc. Mavro Panos came in for a couple of games. I know, obviously, Socrates was at, was out suspended, but um, it's it's yeah, it's not ideal, Harry. I, it's such a difficult um, topic to talk about because. You know, we we obviously don't see what the manager sees every day, and it, it is difficult. But again, for me, it's just something that they're going to have to work a lot on in in the summer, Harry. You know, with transfers, with with just um, Emery. He, I think he's got a really good background uh, team working with him. I've been working with him for years, so they should they should know what to do and and look at different. Um, outcomes and possibilities to improve this team. Um, for me, we, you know, I know we mentioned a minute ago about this this hangover from Arsene Wenger with our away form, etc. Uh, and I think a lot of it is is just down to the mentality of some of these players, um, and they're just they're just not doing enough away from home. When we when we watch Arsenal at home, sometimes they can be play some of the most beautiful. Um, Football that we, we we ever see. I mean, I, I know I know um, uh, Fulham are a really bad team, but when we played them at Craven Cottage, um, we played some lovely football. We looked confident away from home at that time as well, you know. And but there's just you know we, we'll play the this lovely football one week, and then the next week it will just be a complete contrast, and we're really poor, and it, nothing is clicking. Everything's going away, going against us. And um, what I'm concerned about now is that that result against um, Palace is just really knocked us for six now, uh, because like we were saying, last night's performance was abysmal, nowhere near good enough, and I'm just a little bit worried now that we're not going to not going to respond. Um, and I hope, obviously, I'm I'm proved wrong by the team, and we we come out all guns blazing. But we've got some massive games coming up now: Europa League, Valencia. Two away games coming up, um, and when we're we're still um, fighting for the top four, so it's gonna it's definitely gonna be interesting to see the, how the players respond um, and and to see if they can deal with the pressure. And obviously, Unai's going to be feeling that pressure as well, without us, without a doubt. I mean, to be honest, Chris, I mean, I put a poll out uh, ahead of the Wolves game uh, for asking people for their predictions on the Chronicles AFC Twitter. And 66% yeah. put down that Arsenal, you know, they felt Arsenal were going to go to Molyneux and win. Now, I think that that was over-ambitious. I think that was over-optimistic. Yeah. And I think that the disappointment from last night's game at Wolves has been amplified by the fact that we got beaten at home by Crystal Palace. So when you look when you look at it now with hindsight and you go back on it, do you not think that Unai Emery made an error in choosing to leave players out for Molyneux when he could have just gone for that Palace game, won it, three points on the board. You know, our chances of winning at Molyneux were always going to be less anyway because they're a fantastic side. Let's be honest. I'm not, you know, as much as we're pissed off that we got beat, we got beat by a very good side. So for me, it feels like the prioritisation of things has been completely wrong. And for me, that's a real problem, you know. Where do you think this leaves us, though, in terms of the race for the top four? Because we had the opportunity, obviously, to go up to 69 points, one point behind Spurs, who are in third. We would have been in fourth. Chelsea would have been two behind us, with United being five behind us, and the two meeting, of course, this weekend whilst we uh, go to Leicester. It feels like, it just feels like in these last couple of games, we've gone from having the top four in our hands to completely cocking it up, to be honest. Of course, you know, now it's not in our hands because Chelsea are above us, but it feels like we've just cocked it right up. And and that's why I can't help but come across as so negative this week. I'm absolutely furious. I said at the start of the week, I wanted four points from this week. I wanted um, 
you know, from sorry, from the Wolves and Leicester game. I wanted four points from that. We've now you know, lost one of those. We're definitely not going to get four points. The maximum is three. And I'm not convinced that we're going to go to Leicester and beat them. I think they've, you know, come under resurgence under Brendan Rodgers. They're a very good side, have some very useful players. And, you know, quite frankly, our away form is is horrendous. How do you rate our chances now finishing in the top four? Well, yeah, you've hit, you've hit the nail on the head there, Harry. I mean, obviously, we're we're all really disappointed, and it, it it it's hard to feel that we have like we haven't, you know, not thrown this away now because it does it does feel like we have the top four. Um, so, yeah, it's the, the, we should be getting top four, Harry. We should be getting top four, and that if Man United and Chelsea. Uh, haven't been doing so bad this season. It wouldn't. It obviously wouldn't feel as bad as an Arsenal fan right now. But because they've been both both teams, uh, Man United, Chelsea, have been abysmal, um, pretty much you know most of the season and been really disappointing. It makes it even worse because we should be getting top four. I think it will be Man City, Liverpool, Tottenham in that order, and then um, and then obviously we should be finishing fourth. And for me. It's it's a it will be a massive blow. It will be a, um, a massive disappointment, um, because just purely based on the form of of the two teams behind, well, obviously Chelsea now in front, but uh, Man United as well this season. It, it, it's a it's a fantastic opportunity. It's like when when Leicester won the league, Harry. We we could have finished first. We could have won the league, and then we just ended up throwing it away again. And it's like no one wants top four at the moment. It's actually quite funny looking at it, really, but. It's um, it's just uh, yeah, it's it's frustrating. It's you can't work your head around it sometimes because you just think, well, surely as a football club, as a team, as these players, they should be motivated as ever because they know there is a a, a bloody good chance of finishing in the top four. And for me, I haven't seen that from Arsenal at the moment. I just haven't seen that, and that's why I said a little while ago that we've really got to try. And in the next few games, and make some real statements away at Leicester, away at Burnley, to get the six points there, and, and then to, to to get the results against Valencia as well, and Brighton. And I, I just, I'm just wondering if if this, this focus on the Europa League is, is 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 affected our form in the Premier League, and I think it. it Possibly, possibly. I don't know um, because obviously we're in the latter stages of, of that competition as well. And I think there may be a little bit of a belief that we can get to the final and go all the way. So, I mean, it's, it's always difficult when you're in multiple competitions or a couple of competitions, you know, in the last stages because you, you, you begin begin to believe, you know, that you're nearly there. Um, and you think, well, you know, one week we've got an away game or a home game against Crystal Palace, sorry, that we, we know we can get if we when we get top, you know, go back into the top four. And then the next, we've got to uh, play Valencia in, in the semi-finals of, of the Europa League. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't know if that's got anything to do with it. Obviously, you know, players feel pressure all the time. But for me, Harry, I just haven't seen enough from this Arsenal team at the moment to really give me a lot of belief. I didn't, um, I wasn't confident, should I say, ahead of last night's game. Because like you said, Wolves are a bloody good team, especially at home. A place to go. But when I when I uh, saw the res- uh, the um, the actual result, um, or should I say the the game um, standing at half time is three nil down, I, I wasn't. I just, I, do you know, I laughed at myself, um, and then I just thought, I'm, I'm not even shocked. I'm really, really not. I was a little bit optimistic when I saw that the, the team lineup come in because obviously you said you, there's some good players that started last night, and it was stronger than uh, the Palace uh, team that we put out, but. I just wasn't shocked. I wasn't surprised. And I just, uh, you know, I thought to myself, our, our bad run on the road continues. And it is, it is gutting at the moment because it just feels that the team are, are really, really low on confidence. And um, I just, I just really find it difficult uh, seeing us come back um, all guns blazing, to be honest with you. Absolutely. And I think you raised a very interesting point there where you mentioned the Europa League focus. I do think that that, has played a part, even if it wasn't Unai Emery's intention, in the sense that, of course, he did rest players on Sunday following the second leg in Napoli. So he did feel the need to change players. Um, You know, I I don't know. I I don't think the Napoli game was an easy... Well, 
put it this way, the Napoli fixture was a lot easier than I expected it to be. And I felt yeah, like yeah. Arsenal never really came out of second gear. Because of the time we scored, it meant that the second half was a bit of a non-contest. And so I was surprised that Unai felt that so many players needed to then come out of the side. So, you know, for me, I think it has played a part. Whether he wanted to, wanted it to, whether that was in his mind, I don't know. But in, even if it's indirectly, it has played a part in his selection. And that has played a part in the defeat against Crystal Palace. And therefore, you know, I'm not saying we would have won at Wolves if we'd beaten Crystal Palace. But I felt that the Crystal Palace game really knocked us for six in terms of confidence. And that yep. was clear. That was clear. Um, yeah. All right, Chris, that brings us to the end. Uh, just before I let you go, let's have your prediction for the Leicester City game. Of course, that kicks off at 12 noon on Sunday. Uh, another dodgy away trip. That's the last thing we want to see right now, isn't it? Uh, how do you see this <laughs> yeah. one going? Well, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. And I, <laughs> you know what? I really would love to sit here, Harry, and tell you that we're gonna we're gonna go there. We're gonna we're gonna it's gonna be a breath of fresh air, you know. And we've been in really good form recently. You're gonna win about three, four nil. But to be honest, Harry, I, I, I'm not gonna be shocked with any with whatever <laughs> ever result it's gonna be. Obviously, I hope we win. I hope we get the three points, like I've been stating on 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 the podcast just now. We've got to respond, and it's gonna be crucial that we put in a big performance. Um, make a statement and and just give the fans back a little a little bit something over, over, after the the disappointment in the last couple of weeks. So you know uh, it's going to be tough. Leicester have got some really good players. Um, James Madison is going to be one that is going to have to keep tight on him, um, as well as uh, Vardy and um, that Belgian player in midfield they've got on loan. I, I always Tielemans. get his name. It's Tielemans. There he is. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they're all all really good players they've got there right now. Um, and like you said, Brennan Rodgers has done a good job since he's come in. So, by all means, not going to be easy at all. Um, but I, obviously, I hope for the three points. Um, and if we do get those three points, I think it's going to be um, a very, very close call uh, in regards to the scoreline. Oh, lovely. I'm going to go for a... Uh, I'm going to go for a 1-1, I think. Yeah, one one. I'm gonna go yeah. for a one. I'll take I'll I'll take a point, Harry. I'll take anything away from home right now. <laughs> that's a that's the state that we're in at the moment, Chris. <laughs> Chris, do you wanna let our listeners know how they can follow you on social media? Recently saw yeah. that you hit seventeen thousand followers, so congratulations on that. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, um i I'm really lucky to have a great following on Twitter. Um and I really appreciate everyone's support and uh, and kind words so they can find me on twitter uh with the uh, username uh, c davison underscore afc and uh, i'm always doing my best to keep you uh, guys um up to date with all things arsenal football club great stuff chris thanks very much and we'll speak again soon no doubt Thank you, Terry. Thanks for having me on. Take care. That was the brilliant Chris Davison, and that brings us to the end of another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna. Don't forget, we're sponsored by the last man standing with loserpool.com. Head over there. All you've got to do is pick the loser in the Premier League from week to week for your chance to win £1,000. Uh, sign up, check it out, read through the rules. It's really simple and there's some fantastic prizes, of course, up for grabs. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube or iTunes or SoundCloud or wherever it is that you listen from. Uh, huge thanks for all your continued support. You can also follow us on Twitter at Chronicles underscore AFC. We'd love to hear your comments on the show as always. And we'll be back uh, following on from the Leicester game. We'll be back on Monday with another episode. So thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, hopefully Arsenal don't spoil it for us again this coming Sunday. Cheers. <laughs>